I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I Hello and welcome back to part two on this uh, Continental uh, model M500 um, portable radio. Um, what did I find out about this? I did do a little research and I found out that this is, uh, the Radio Museum has an entry um, shown here and uh, it says in the text that this was probably made in Japan. Although it's interesting because I thought there were really strict rules about how to label things made in Japan post-war. Um, but I don't see any indication that this is made in Japan uh, yet. I haven't uncovered it. Might be buried someplace in there. Um, but then I ran across another resource and that resource is the Japanese Radio Museum. And the Japanese Radio Museum says very clearly that this is made in Japan by the uh, Katsuyama Radio TV Production Company in 1954. Um, and it turns out there are a couple of radios that look very similar to, or not a couple, one other that looks very similar to this. And that is the uh, American made RCA. Um, B411 tube style radio. It looks, I mean, down to this strip right here and the knob in the center and on off there and the handle looks the same. Um, it's slightly smaller case than this, just a, you know, like a quarter inch, half inch around. So a slightly smaller case. You look inside the RCA. And at first blush, you think, well, it's the same radio. And a closer inspection proves that it is not the same radio. Uh, the layout of the circuit board on the RCA is the same. The circuit board's lying on its, on its side. Tubes are in kind of the same order. Uh, it gets different when uh, you notice the RCA doesn't have this, this connector right here, and I found out what that's for, too. Uh, the... Um, the tuning condenser is different in there, um, but the the B battery goes here and the A battery goes here, so they're you know they're really quite similar. And again, as I said at first blush, it, it would be easy to con confuse the two. Um, Phil at uh, Steel City three two one PB remarked that the uh, radio is very similar to the British Ultra Coronation Twin from nineteen fifty three. Um, and here's a picture of that one. The twin looks like a lot fancier radio to me, Phil, but uh, I believe you, it's uh, it's probably a four-tube uh, uh, broadcast band uh, receiver, just like this one. Um, so, we have a date for this thing, 1954, if the Radio Museum is correct. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the battery. Um, as you probably know, this is a, well, as I said last time, this is a 60, takes a, a 67.5 volt battery for the uh, B plus. And uh, nobody really makes those anymore. You can buy an old one and restuff it. Um, but if you take a glob of these guys, my old pal 9 volt batteries, it's a bunch I got cheap from Harbor Freight and stack them up. You get about 60 volts of uh, B+. Plus. The tubes that are in here um, uh, will handle 60 volts fine. They're, they're built to go all the way down to 40 volts um, for B+. Plus. So my next challenge was battery boxes. There are a number of uh, layouts for battery boxes on the web. I'll put links below uh, to some of these. Um, this one is a generic B battery um, box. I printed it on index stock paper. It's just standard. You know, you can buy it at any office supply company. 
Um, I really like the plan for this. It went together, uh, just cut it out uh, with an X-Acto knife and, and start to fold it together and you see it just comes together beautifully um, and shows you where the battery connectors are. Um, and it's, you know, it's generic. It kind of goes along with the generic Radio B battery um, label inside the battery, the, the radio. It fits in there tightly, but it fits in there. Don't want your batteries rattling around. So they wouldn't be bad. But I read this uh, EverReady 467 or equivalent, and I thought, well, it would be cool to have something that looks like that. So I found a set of plans, uh, uh, patterns on the internet again for uh, a replica of the 467 by EverReady. Uh, this one is printed on the same index stock as this one. Uh, came out fine, I think. This one is printed on uh, photo paper, and it's it's glossy, and the blue is much more intense as is the red. But I decided it's too glossy. I can't. I have never held a uh, ever ready battery 467 battery in my hand, so I don't know what the box looks like. But I decided I'm going to go with this one, um, just because it looks older to me. It's not as not as flashy, not as not as sparkly, not as shiny. I could could try might try printing uh, on uh, matte finish photo paper. It might look better. Uh, I might try that too. But uh, so I have a box which I can modify. Um, for that, I have wrappers for the uh, the uh, the D cell that goes right here, um, so that will look vintage as well. Um, so now the next thing to do, I need to take this tube out and put it somewhere. <laughs> the next thing to do is to take care of this bit that's flopping around that should not be flopping around. This is the um, ferrite core antenna and it broke off right there. I don't know why and this black stuff that I found rattling around inside the radio when I first cracked the case is what that is. It's from the edge of where it broke off here. Now what I'm going to do is pull the chassis. I'm going to have to do that anyway to clean up the case. So I'll pull the chassis. I'll try my very best not to destroy these labels, but I know at least in one case, like right here, there is a screw that I'm going to have to remove that's right there. Um, then I'm faced with the, the business of gluing this part of the ferrite core back to the rest of the ferrite core. And the deal is that that has to be conductive. So I'm thinking some um, JB Weld has some conduct conductive steel uh, epoxy compound. I don't know how conductive it is or whether it's conductive enough, but it probably is okay. Uh, but I'll try that first. If that doesn't work, um, this project may grind to a halt. I would have to find a graphite core of the right size and then wind, unwind these, these two coils. This is the primary antenna coil. I think this is the, the uh, that's a secondary over there, or is it? No, it's nothing there. So it's just this one core coil. Um, I'd, I'd have to wind a new one. I'm not excited about it, but I could do it, I think. Um, so. I guess the order of business is to get this out. I'll get the tubes tested. I, I'm waiting, by the way, to finish up the battery pack. I'm waiting for some connectors to interconnect all the 9 volt batteries and then to build a uh, connector that goes on top of the box with the, these guys that are quite a, quite a distance apart. Um, so next I will take this apart if I can without destroying anything. Ah, uh -huh, boy. Let me sit down on my old easy chair a minute. There you are. Ah, Paul shot a bar. <laughs> <laughs> ah.
Thank goodness we only have to take one vacation a year. <laughs> sure tires you out, don't it? <laughs> yes, but it's been a wonderful trip. You've learned all about salmon fishing, bear hunting, and underwater photography. Huh? What do you mean, underwater photography? You mean it was accidental when you fell out of the canoe with a movie camera? <laughs> Oh, dear, look out the window and see who it is, McGee. Oh, it's Mrs. Uppington. Come in, Uppy. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Abigail? My, it's nice to see you again. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Uppy. I'm glad to see even you. <laughs> <laughs> How's the world been treating you? Seldom? <laughs> Have you had a nice summer, Abigail? Oh, delightful, Mr. McGee, simply delightful. I spent the summer singing for the boys in the army camp. Oh. oh, but tell me, where have you been and what have you been doing? Well, sir, Uppy, we drove to Seattle and took a boat to Alaska. Wonderful country, too. It's the... Oh, my, how those soldiers did appreciate my singing. I was on the program with another lady singer, you know, and they simply wouldn't let me leave the platform. <laughs> they kept shouting, more, more, give us more. Yeah. Oh, well, that must have made the other singer feel fine. Who was she? Uh, Grace Moore, I believe. <laughs> Well, let me tell you about Alaska, Uppy. It's a beautiful country. You ain't seen anything till you've seen the first rays of the Arctic sun glinting on the icy waters of Ketchikan Creek with... Oh, you must tell me all about it, Mr. McGee. (laughs) Sometime. But now I simply must be going. I must let nothing interfere with my work for the boys. Oh, did I ever show you the lovely letter of appreciation I received from the White House for my work in a previous national emergency? Yes, you did, Abigail. And I must say it was real thoughtful of President Lincoln to do it. (laughs) Oh, yes, indeed it was. I beg your pardon. It was President Wilson. Goodbye. Wow. If I'd have been you, Molly, I wouldn't have been quite so... I almost forgot. Welcome home. Well, it's out. What a great gob of glue they put right there. I'm amazed that label came out as well as it did. Um, Tiny little speaker. Doesn't scratch. Looks like they had drops of glue perhaps in here too. Although those may be to hold the screws in place. Uh, it's interesting that the whole um, tuning condenser is floating here on rubber grommets and three mounting points, but it's really kind of floppy. I don't know whether that's because the grommets have worn out. Probably. Um, probably. I took the uh, audio transformer off unnecessarily. 
I think I'll uh, screw that back down just to make sure it doesn't flop around and break anything. But it looks like there are only three points of attachment. Yeah, so three points of attachment to the uh, to the case. Um, I should be able to bend these tabs up. There are four tabs there, and get this grill piece off before I wash it. Um, and of course, the biggest problem with washing it is this label. What I'll have to do is take a really good picture of that as best I can and. Uh, recreate it because it might survive a wash. It probably won't, but it might. Um, and I can't use the acetone trick on that because acetone will damage this plastic case, I'm pretty sure. I'd be surprised if it didn't. But there are no cracks in the case. All looks good. Just dirty. A little discoloration there from I don't know what. All right, we have the chassis out. And uh, that'll probably do it for this time. I will um, make my, well, first of all, attach the, <laughs> reattach this. And then I'll make my way down to the hardware store and get some JV Weld metal epoxy and uh, see if I can epoxy this back together. So it probably works better with the whole graphite right in, right in place rather than just two inches of it. All right, till next time. See ya, take care, behave yourself.